Turning now to the nuclear crisis in Japan, smoke spewed Monday from two reactors in Fukushima's Daiichi power plant and workers were evacuated. The director of the UN's nuclear watchdog agency warned, and I quote, the crisis has not been resolved and the situation remains, and I quote again, very serious. International security expert and CNN contributor Jim Walsh joins us now and Edie Hill is here as well. Jim, thanks for being with us again. Let me just frame the question this way. How much radiation is leaking right now and is it more or less than yesterday? So are we making progress? And are those spent pools that have been the focus of so much attention, is the temperature in those pools going down, which is what we hope? Two good questions, Elliot, on the first radiation levels, and the answer to that is it's all about location, location, location. One of the big developments we had today, a new development, is that the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, is finally, and I underline the word finally, on the ground, and they are independently taking radiation measurements. They went out today about 26 kilometers from the plant, and then uh, uh, 500 kilometers from the plant, and they report on their website tonight that there are at least two locations that have high levels of contamination. That's their wording, not mine. Now, they didn't specify what those were. So again, my answer is, is the radiation situation good or bad? It depends on where you are, because in some locations, clearly, at least in two locations, according to the IAEA, it is a problem. On the issue of the spent uh, pond, uh, the spent fuel ponds, where they keep the nuclear waste, again, another development on this today. First, to answer your question, are the temperatures good? We don't know. Well, you know, we haven't heard anything in days about the one at uh, Unit 4. Uh, Unit 3, there was a suspected fire near that spent fuel pond today, so that remains undetermined. But in addition to 3 and 4, the IAEA is again reporting tonight on its website that there is a separate uh, fuel, uh, spent fuel pond where they store waste away from the reactors and that the government is now pouring water on top of that facility. Uh, that's all they say. Now that would lead you to believe that they're a little concerned about it or there might be an issue there insofar as they're taking actions today that they have not taken in the past. But again, uh, facts are few here, so we can't uh, offer a precise judgment. Jim, the IAEA says that it's getting uh, information that is, in their words, conflicting from the Japanese government. What questions do you think the government needs to answer right now? Well, you know, part of this may be that the government, and more particularly the utility in, in, uh, here, doesn't have the answers. They may not know what the answers are, but I know what the questions are. The questions are, what caused those fires today? Why did we have new fires at Unit 2 and Unit 3? And uh, why, is that, why is that a critical question to answer? Because if you don't know why, what's causing the fire, number one, you can't prevent that from happening again, and it may indicate a problem that needs to be addressed. Uh, you, uh, the, for me, you know, I'm worried about the reactors, yes, but it seems like we're making progress there. We got five and six taken care of. One looks pretty good. Uh, they're pumping the water in, but I continue to be remain, uh, remain uh, concerned about the, well, the nature of the problem at the spent fuel ponds at three and four. Is there a hole in one of them? Is water leaking out? Uh, what is this new development today with the separate facility that's on the ground outside of the reactor? So uh, all my questions would focus uh, or, or would primarily focus on those spent fuel ponds and what their status is. You know, Jim, another dimension of this problem is that some of the radiation comes down and gets embedded in the soil, which is what makes significant areas uh, of around Chernobyl, for instance, impossible to be inhabited. Is that a concern around the reactors? And if so, how large a domain, how large a piece of property is that going to be to affect? Well, it's a good question. I don't think we have a final answer on that. Uh, one would uh, guess that in the main, uh, the, it's the area around the plants themselves that will have the highest amount of radiation. Uh, when radiation is up in the air and it begins to disperse, and it, as it disperses, it falls down to the ground. Well, it falls the most of it falls closest to the area of the immediate vicinity, presumably. There's another development here uh, tonight, uh, Elliot, that does have an impact on the answer to this question. That is. Uh, Japan is going to get some rain. And so uh, what happens when it rains is if you have uh, dust particles or smoke uh, uh, that has radiation attached to it and it rains, the rain washes that out of the atmosphere and then it collects in, more, in a more concentrated form on parts of the ground where it could uh, attach to vegetation or it might get into water. So I think we're going to want to watch the weather pattern over the next couple of days and see what impact that may have in terms of how radiation is, is distributed and how concentrated it might become. All right, Jim Walsh, as always, thanks for your insight. Thank you.